Hello there, Northwest Indiana. It's me again, Jenny Craig Brown. Happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing good this week. We've got, I think some of us have some short weeks for the holidays, so that's exciting. Um, tell me in the comments today what you are going to do, what is awesome for the 4th of July, um, because I want to know all the fun stuff. But if you're just tuning in for the first time, I am Jenny Craig Brown, and this is Great News Weekly with GreatNews.life. We do a weekly exclusively positive news show for you guys that really is just shouting out the good happening in Northwest Indiana and hopefully across the world. So tune in every day. You can tune in or every week. You can tune in here on NWI.life Facebook Live um, at noon, of course, as you can see here. But if you don't have time, maybe you're catching this later or you're catching it um, a different and you, you normally can't. You can also catch this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever, wherever you listen to your podcast. So you can listen um, on those stations or you can come here and share your good news with us too. So I'm going to tell you guys tons of good news, which is awesome. However, you guys can tell me your good news. So we ask you guys for your lifelines, which are our good news tips. Um, so please share those in the comments on the video, um, on the live feed, or if you're not watching, but you're listening later, email those to us. We love to hear your lifelines. So if you um, are not listening or watching live, email those to us at share at greatnews.life and just subject lifelines. We want to know all your good news. So I'm going to kick it off this week. Like I said, share your good news with me in the comments below. Also, make sure to tell me what you're doing for the 4th of July. What's fun? Because we're going to go over some events and I want to know if there's any that I don't know about too. So first up, we've got Pete Corellis and Jeff Tharp of Corellis Roofing celebrate 60 years of partnership. So I don't know if you guys know about Corellis Roofing, but let me just tell you, if you think roofing is boring, you're wrong. Um, I have personally learned so much about roofing over the past couple years via Corellis, and it is a fascinating industry, let me tell you that. But this awesome story that we have by our very incredible and talented Kellen Vale is all about um, the history of Corellis Roofing. So they're celebrating 60 years, and they were founded by George and Harriet Corellis, and it was started in their garage. It's a company in their garage, and they very quickly found that they were growing out of this garage space. So they, um, a few years after opening, they came and built or got a new location in Hammond. And then that's when Jeff came into the picture as that partner. And now Pete and Jeff are running this incredible business. They're one of the largest roofing companies in the state. They have done incredible projects. They've done a lot of great work in Hammond and all over the region. So I would love for everybody to kind of check this out. It's a really great piece all about their history, what they do, who these guys are, how they came into the business. And it's a really great piece. And like I said, if you haven't, if, if you think it's boring, I'm telling you, roofing is this industry I knew nothing about and I'm so interested in now. And it's incredible to see, you know, the difference from when I was a kid and you saw, you know, all the, these people on the roof and there's so much more technology behind it now. And of course, Corellis is on the forefront of all of that technology. They are absolutely amazing. And they are really showing what Rufus is all about. Roofing is all about. And Corellis is just keeping it strong. And they have a lot of great opportunities for um, jobs and work. And so hit up Corellis Roofing check out their social, check out this story. I mean, these gentlemen have come through since they were young kids and are now running this great roofing um, company. So kudos to Pete Corellis and Jeff Tharp. And uh, thanks, Kellen, for putting this piece out. It's, it's a really interesting piece. Next up, guys, I have... I want to share with you a little something about the VNA. So I think um, you know a little bit about the VNA and you probably know that VNA of NWI also is part of the Meals on Wheels uh, crew as well. And we recently uh, put together a piece about it. So I'm going to share that with you now so you can learn more.
The mission of VNA Meals on Wheels is to provide a hot, nutritious lunch along with a wellness check-in to those in Porter County. We are more than just a meal delivery service. So we are 200, over 200 volunteers strong who care. We just ensure that our clients are seen. They're not alone. Um, we have tried a couple avenues. So one is our companionship phone calls. It is a very successful program where our volunteers are calling out to our clients one to two times a week to chat. We also have had many donations of wonderful cards. So um, cards are being put in the meal bags on a regular basis just to brighten our clients' day um, and let them know that we're gonna get through this. VNA Meals on Wheels happens in partnership with Pines Village. And every morning, Chef Frank is cooking, Chef Frank and his team are cooking hot, meals ready to go out, ready to eat when they get to our client's door. The neat thing is we are able to cook to many dietary restrictions. So they are getting a protein, starch, and hot vegetable in their tray. They also get milk, a slice of wheat bread with margarine, um, and a fresh fruit or healthy dessert, uh, along with a side salad in their hot lunch. So it's a nice variety. Since I've been with Meals on Wheels, you know, between the feeding of my heart and soul and the feeding of my body, I just, it's been such a miraculous difference and it's just made, it's just made each one of my days better. Okay, everyone, go volunteer right now. I know you want to. Um, Julie Kissinger has been a, a such a bright light from the Meals on Wheels program. And she's just been a great person to work with and learn, teach us more about the Meals on Wheels program. So thank you to her and to the chef and to Pines Village and to VNA. I mean, this is a really great program to have in our community. And these guys are making sure that it is growing every day and helping more people every day. I think I mentioned last week, they just instituted um, birthday bags. So hopefully they're basically trying to get volunteers to um, give birthday boxes or bags to all of those Meals on Wheels recipients. So if July is Sue's birthday, then she gets her meals and a gift. And it's so sweet and they're so genuine and they truly care about our community. So thank you, Julie. Thank you to the whole VNA and Meals on Wheels team. Again, Pines Village, you guys are all just awesome and incredible. So, and call them. They are always looking for volunteers. You can deliver meals. You can donate birthday boxes. Just give time, give money, whatever you can. I think what we learned from the pandemic so far is that there's a lot of people that need help and we are here to help them. And if you're able to help, please donate your time. Um, let's go on to, I want to read some stories. Yes. Stacy Kellogg says the connection that the Meals on Wheels volunteers have with the community is so inspiring. I completely agree. It's so sweet. So thank you. Um, I've got a couple others I want to read. Um, we've got uh, Cammie gave a shout out to Kellen Vale. She said, Kellen, you seriously write the mo most amazing articles. I love reading this one about Corellis. I totally agree. Kellen is a long-term lifer, a uh, lifer for life, as we like to say, and she's just an incredible writer and has a great spirit. So thank you, Kellen. Um, I think I've got a couple lifelines here. Stephanie said, my lifeline this week is hanging out with my little bro, Brandon Baisden. Tag him. I hope he tunes in. I hope he knows that he's ex you're excited to see him. So that's exciting. Um, it's lovely to see families that, you know, I, I know Stephanie personally and obviously um, Brandon through her and they live far apart. So it's so sweet and heartfelt to get to see these people kind of hanging out, you know, first time in several months. It's beautiful. Um, what is everybody else doing this weekend? Who are you seeing? Who are you hanging out with? What kind of cool stuff are you getting into? Are you just sitting in your backyard in a kiddie pool? Because I'm okay with that. Trust me. That's my second, it's my backup plan. Uh, so share with me, you guys. Um, Igor Alempovich, he's going to kill me for getting that wrong. Um, I said, my good news is that after a bunch of surgeries and stressful complications, my family is finally healthy and doing good. Yay! 
this is the worst time to have health issues, um, you know, in the midst of a pandemic. And I'm so happy to hear that your family is healthy and well. Uh, give them all hugs from all of us and all of the audience. We love all of them. And we're so happy to hear that you have a safe and healthy family, Igor. Thank you. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, shout outs from Stephanie to Pines Village Retirement Communities. I totally agree that that's a lot of work to undertake for all of those meals. Stephanie, you're exactly right. That's shout out. Well do. Um, so let's go next to a very heartfelt story that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, but I knew I couldn't do it myself. And Kellen, our team member wrote this one as well. It's a survivor series piece on Nicholas Petralia. Um, she wrote an incredible story, but I just knew having this one, um, a little more personal. So I actually, we contacted Nicholas and got some footage of him and he's going to tell us his story through his words. So um, let's kick it to that footage. All right, everybody. Good afternoon. We've got Nicholas Petralia here. Thank you so much, um, Nicholas, for being a part today. Principal of Salk Elementary School and newest title is uh, part of our Survivor Series here at the Life Sites, right? Correct. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for the opportunity to uh, speak uh, and hopefully uh, my my story can um, impact some people out there and um, quite possibly take what could be a negative and hopefully turn that into a positive. So um, yeah. I was uh, what I thought was a healthy uh, young man, 30 years old, and uh, went into the doctor's office one day and the doctor came in and uh, unfortunately told me the news that uh, I had stage two testicular cancer. Uh, but from that very moment on, uh, it, it was my um, mental state to turn that negative into a positive. Uh, and I, I made it up early in my, in my mind that I was gonna, I was gonna beat this and defeat, defeat this um, cancer, uh, in which I did. Uh, I'm sitting here now, um, uh, about to be 39 here in uh, two weeks, July, July 13th, and uh, that that announcement was um, the single best thing that ever happened to me uh, because it has allowed me to focus and appreciate each and every day. I often tell people, I say the 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 sky is a, is a little bit bluer. Uh, and the, cl the clouds are a little bit wider and the sun shines a little bit brighter because uh, I appreciate each and every moment I have with my um, students, staff, my wife and my children and my family. Uh, I'm just very grateful for each and every day to be uh, living on this earth and uh, that negative has now inspired me to be a better person. That is probably your story is so motivational and that's why we wanted to have you on. So thank you so much for the time um, and your outlook of, you know, flipping this to a positive and learning from it and becoming a better person is something that just inspired me and aligns with our mission here at greatnews.live. So uh, thank you. We are so happy along with your students and family that you're here with us um, and oh you're, <laughs> yeah, that you're healthy and you're safe. And yeah. so thank you so much for taking the time, not only to be a part of the Survivor Series, but to be here with us today. Thanks again, um, uh, world. This is Nicholas Petrella and he is our amazing Survivor Series member. Thanks again, Nick. All right, thank you guys and you all be well. I told you it was good. I wasn't kidding. Um, so thank you again, Nicholas, for being a part. And as you can see, you know, he, we loved his story and we love all of our survivor stories, but um, his was so aligned so perfectly with us because of that mentality of turning a negative into a positive. So thank you, Nicholas, for that. And just a shout out to the world. We are always looking for survivor series members. So 
if you are a survivor yourself of any sort of cancer, um, if you know someone that would make that good survivor uh, spotlight, we're always looking for new spotlights. So you can email share at greatnews.life for that one as well. Um, just like you would a lifeline, just nominate someone for the survivor series and we will interview them and they can be part of this awesome piece. So um, this is a really, for us, a really great way to share the inspiring stories um, from something that's so tough to handle and from these people battling just right there on the front lines with cancer. So thank you again, Nicholas, and you guys just shout him out and connect with him and give him kudos. Chris Malman, exactly. Way to go, Nicholas. Love your perspective of turning a negative into a positive. That is super amazing. You're exactly right, Chris. Thank you. Um, it's just such a great way to be because you can you can take these bad news anyway. And he took it the best way, which is flipping it into a positive. So great, great job. Agreed, Chris. Thank you. Um, I've also got a lifeline. I want to read from Cami Tupiak. She said, lifeline time. So look, she's sassy. Lifeline time. I've seen a ton of wildlife these past few weeks. And the other day I saw someone pull off to the side of the road and help a turtle get across the road to safety. Yay. That's so cute. We need to like write a life in the spotlight on them for saving a turtle. That's so adorable and you're right. Um, and Stacy Kellogg actually responded and said, I love seeing when this happens. Um, I completely agree. It's so sweet to see someone helping wildlife. It's all around us and we need to be so grateful for it. So thank you. That's a great lifeline. Oh, and I've got another good one from Tony Ketchum. He said, my life, I love this one. Tony, you're on it today. My lifeline is my dad always packing a lunch for me to take to work. I'm 23 and it feels awesome. Tony, first we need to talk. I haven't yet received a lunch from your dad. So that's um, probably one problem I have with that. But otherwise, um, that's awesome. I love that your dad still makes you lunch. It's so sweet. He's still thinking about you even 23 years later. That's awesome. Good lifeline. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Stacy Kellogg said, sharing your personal medical journey for the benefits of others is a kind, helpful, and pretty amazing Kind, helpful, and pretty amazing. Thank you, Nicholas Petrelia. Love your story of survival and inspiration. I completely agree. I know, and I probably just breezed past, like, hey, if you want to talk about it, you know, but you're right, Stacy. it takes a lot. But our goal with these stories is that you can share your personal journey and that can help someone down the line that's going to be dealing with the same personal journey. Um, and I think that inspirational story of you being a survivor and being, um, you know, strong and getting through it lets people know that they can do it too. So I love that. Um, Karin said, yeah, Karin, exactly. Love the survivor story. So good to hear good news in the midst of a bad situation. Exactly. Yes. It's been rough. Uh, it's been a rough couple of months. It's a rough couple of weeks. If someone's going through cancer, it's just a rough time. And so you're exactly right. Like getting something good out of these situations is I think personally how I'm coping through a pandemic. So <laughs> I really think that you're exactly right. It's great to hear the good news. Um, that's what we're here for. You know, we've been around, if you don't know the history of the life sites, we've been around for 11 years and the whole goal of what we do every day is to serve the community with good news. We have plenty of companies doing the bad. We don't want to touch that. We want to share the good with you because there's so much good. Trust us. We see it every day. So share your good news with us because we want to share it with the world. Thank you, Karin. Great, great point. Um, Chris Malman said, my lifeline this week is seeing the outpouring of memories and thanks shared to John Groth on his retirement. I think we should have John Groth on next week. John, let's interview you about your retirement. Um, we love you. So John Groth, if you don't know John, he is part of the Porter County Career and Tech Center. He just retired. I, I think he ran the whole show pretty much. Um, so a big... Thank you to all of your work. We here at the Life Sites have worked with, hired, and um, helped, I guess. Uh, they've actually helped us, plenty of students from you. So we are so thankful that you have been such a hashtag legend, Chris is right, through all these years and have been such an amazing outlet for the community. And I'm certain it will. Con this Career Center will continue to be equally amazing because you've set it up that way. So happy retirement, John Growth. And uh, you're right, Chris, it's been awesome to see all the outpouring of love and appreciation for him. Uh, so if you if you worked with him, if you were part of his uh, the tech center as a student, um, shout him out, 
give him some love. He's a pretty great guy. Um, okay, guys, I don't see a lot of comments on what you're doing. So maybe you need some events, but we'll get there. Next up, I'm going to talk about Lakeshore Paws and the amazing Paul and Tears, Lori Giuliana and Heidi Thibodeau. These ladies are uh, awesome volunteers from Lakeshore Paws. So as I tell you their incredible story written by our amazing Aubrey Thompson, I am also going to show you puppies because who doesn't love puppies? So I recently went to Lakeshore Paws and got some awesome footage of these beautiful dogs. So these are dogs that are looking for new permanent homes. Um, so check them out as we're going. But I just really want to talk about Lori and Heidi because they're incredible volunteers. So um, Heidi has volunteered with the company since 2011 and Jillian has been volunteering for over a year and they're both just strong, dedicated volunteers, which of course Lakeshore Paws definitely needs and everybody needs. Um, so they both talk a lot about how they foster. They both have um, kind of a farm area and they foster these pups whenever Lakeshore Paws needs, which is incredible. And just visiting, that's my favorite one right there. Um, when I visited yesterday, these dogs, I did not know this, but they get eight to 10 walks a day. So they have great homes, um, temporary homes here with Lakeshore Paws um, between the volunteers that foster and between the amazing facility that we have here in Valparaiso they have great temporary homes, but we need you guys to help them find permanent homes. So check out all these cute puppies. I was dying yesterday there. It was so sweet to see all these dogs. They're so cute. They're so excited. Um, so if you ever need some volunteer, you want to volunteer, like I mentioned the VNA, maybe that's not for you, but you want to volunteer your time, go walk puppies. I mean, it's not a bad way to spend a Saturday, right? So you can contact Lakeshore Paws and just give them a call, see what they need. Um, I know they're always looking for some donations. They're always looking for volunteers to help with the pups. So please um, call them today and be a part because those pups just broke my heart yesterday. They were so cute. I love them. I can't have any more animals, I've already been told. So you guys need to come find your forever home for these pups. They're adorable. Thank you so much. Oh, and Cammy mentioned, yeah, um, Paul and Tears, Aubrey Thompson, great, hashtag great. This article is so sweet. It's great to see the volunteers who help out at Lakeshore Paws. Also, I now want to take all of these dogs home. I know, aren't they so cute? And let's just talk about Paul and Tears. Clever, well played, Aubrey. I like it. Um, Stacy Kellogg agreed. All the doggies. I want them. Me too. Um, they're beautiful. And like I said, you walk in there and it is, you can tell those pups have a great temporary home. So you all can be their forever home. So get in there today, find your perfect match. They help you. They've got a great backyard. So you can go out and actually like test out your time with a puppy. Are you the good fit for him? Is he a good fit for you? You know, those sorts of things, they make sure that it's a great fit for both of you. So get out there today, find a forever home or just volunteer some time. It's awesome. All right. So Stephanie Swearington said, 4th of July, we are going to be setting off some small fireworks at home, grilling out at home and spending time at home. Hashtag socially distanced 4th of July. But really, that is every 4th of July for us. <laughs> uh, that's a really good point, though. And it's not a bad thing. I, you know, we do similar. We watch some fireworks and hang out with the family. And I think this is a great way to celebrate Independence Day, especially if you're trying to be socially distant. Um, that is quite fine. And you can still have a really great time. So Stephanie, I hope you enjoy time with your family and your home. It's great to do that. Um, Let's see. Grace Benkowski said, my lifeline is meeting my future roommate for college. Ooh, that's fun. It's so exciting to start getting stuff together for our dorm. Oh my gosh. I love this. I never had this experience. I didn't do a dorm in college, but um, it's such a cool thing to meet that new person that hopefully you guys will get along really well and be really great friends. So I want to hear all about it. Call us in six months and tell us what best friends you are, Grace. That's really exciting. Um, I hope your dorm is super cute, which I'm sure it will be, and you guys are going to make it perfect. Um, let's see what else we've got. I think that might be all of my lifelines for right now. Um, Let's talk events. So Stephanie's right. A lot of people like to chill, grill out, have, you know, family over for their 4th of July. I love it. 
if you're looking for maybe you have Friday off and you want something to do, or you want to get out a little bit this weekend, I've got some fun stuff for you. So check it out. Um, July 3rd. So that's Friday if you're off or if you work, it doesn't matter because it's called GSB Wine After Work. This is the Grace Scott Band at White Horse Winery. Um, it starts at 6 p.m. That is Eastern time. So this, uh, if you've never heard of White Horse Winery, it's a really cute small winery in Monticello, Indiana. And so you can kind of get, feel like you're getting away a little bit but not too far out of the way. It's a really great, it's a beautiful setting. And I don't know Grace Scott Band well, but I've heard they're amazing. So I'm certain they promise to be a really fun time. Have a glass of wine, sit outside and relax a little bit. Um, also after the holiday, July 5th, uh, La Park dedication celebration. So uh, Bethany Church has partnered up with Frank Ray Music and they are going to basically celebrate the new park that is right there by um, Bethany Church in Laporte. So Sunday, July 5th, from 4 to 8 p.m., they're going to have Frank Ray Music performing live starting around 5.30. Uh, there's going to be a splash pad and playground. They are going to have seating that's distance so everybody can stay safe. Um, and the playground is amazing because it's built for all ages and all abilities. So they've got some really great state-of-the-art equipment that's really going to help for everybody to feel inclusion throughout the whole community. It's a really great event as well. Next one. I'm really excited about this, y'all. Okay, so the Besnick Center for the Arts is having, they are, they're launching their Well-Behaved Women Open House. So this is their next installment. And it's this Friday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So all day. Now you do, because of socially distancing and the rules they have and the, and the protocol they put in place, you need to go online and get a ticket. They are free, but it's just to ensure that they know what time you're going to be there and that you can have your full time in the exhibit. So obviously, uh, with our All About the Girls events, well-behaved women is a topic that strikes a chord with us. So I think some of my team was already planning on going. So go ahead and reserve your space. Um, they're doing them, I think, from like 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, hour-long spots. I think the 10 a.m. spots are already gone. So get on, get your free ticket so you can sign up and check it out. And then while you're in Michigan City, um, if you don't know, Lubesnik Center is in Michigan City. Um, there's great, you know, Fiddlehead's a great restaurant. There's the beach, there's Patrick Squirrel. So you can kind of make a really cool afternoon um, visiting the Michigan City area. It's beautiful out there. So it's another great one. And Lubesnik Center, if you haven't been for a while, they are doing amazing work there. And this exhibit promises to be super fantastic. So it's another good one. Um, let's see what's next. Steel on the Farm is a really great band. I've seen them a couple times and they are at Leroy's Hot Stuff, um, which is a, a, plate, a restaurant right on Highway 20 in Porter, Indiana. They're there Friday, July 3rd. So 9 p.m. I think is when they kick off to 1 a.m. at Leroy's. I haven't been to Leroy's, so I can't tell you a ton about them, but I can tell you that Steel on the Farm is an awesome band. They're a lot of fun. So check them out. July 3rd, Leroy's Hot Stuff. It'll be really fun. And then one of our, of course, all-time favorites is... Uh, Zao Island's live music. So as I've mentioned before, they have Z Zao Island has music throughout the summer on Saturdays. This week is Trinity. Uh, but to give you a little sneak peek, our very own Jenna DeMuth went out recently and she got some footage of this setup and scene here at Zao Island. Let's kick it to that. Thanks, Jenna. She had a great time at that coverage, so I had to show it. It's so awesome. So this um, July 4th, they are still on for live music. 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Trinity is playing this week at Zao Island. And then if you go on their site, you can see the other bands upcoming. So it's another great spot to hang out and um, enjoy your 4th of July. So, and of course, if you haven't been to Zao Island in a while, they have incredible pizza. So you need to get there for that. They also have, you can have a cocktail. Kids can have uh, some soda, play disco or play 
mini golf, listen to live music, laser tag, the whole nine. So it's a great way to get out, especially if you have a full family. Um, but you can also do it and it's really fun if, for just a date night. So it's a great, great option. Get out to Zale Island ASAP. And I think I've got some more lifelines. All right. Uh, my life. Oh, story, Stacey Kellogg said my lifeline this week, hands down, my sister Shelly Manor and Sean Manor. They are my heart rocks and best friends. So grateful. I love seeing siblings that are very close. It is beautiful. And I love my siblings. So I know exactly how this feels. I'm so happy that you have them in your life and that they're your rocks. It's really important. So good, good, good. Uh, Carrie Bedwell said she loves Whitehorse. So listen, I know Carrie, you can trust her. I think it's a great place. She thinks it's a great place. I'm just saying, probably a good plan to get out there when you can. Um, we've also got, let me see. Oh, Shelly Manor said, my lifeline has been my amazing husband and my family for all of our unconditional love and support, all of their unconditional love and support. Look, Shelly, I saw that tag earlier. Yeah, you guys are like family and you're all giving each other love and I love it. So cute. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit fireworks. So 4th of July is the best time for fireworks. And I wanted to shout out the city of Hammond this week. Um, they've done this really awesome thing. It's called bringing you the boom. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not very cool, but they brought the, the fireworks show to you. So obviously it's really hard to get everybody together for fireworks. Not everyone has their own backyard show. And so the city of Hammond basically combined the few fireworks shows that they have during the summer for different festivals and things that they're not able to have into one um, day. And they took their fireworks shows and they split them up throughout Hammond. So they're, they believe that from anywhere in Hammond you are, you will be able to see the Hammond fireworks just from your backyard. So great job, Hammond. Love that. So if you're a Hammond resident, just walk outside and you can see some fireworks this weekend and report back to me. I want to see, I want to hear about how amazing they are. Uh, Sean Manor said Hammond represent. Yeah. So that's good. I love, um, I love that they're doing that. So um, if you're a Valpo resident, I believe they're doing fireworks, um, but it's ticketed. I think it's already sold out. If you're not, um, I think there's, it sounds like Hammond's the place to be, candidly. They're doing it really amazingly. So great job to the city of Hammond. I just want to give them a shout out. Obviously, um, there's lots of great things happening in the region for parades and fireworks and all those great things. But those are the ones I wanted to shout out this week because they're all my faves. So thank you, guys. Um, and I think that's all I have for you. So let's report back next week, Wednesday noon, NWI.live Facebook. I want to hear all about how your 4th of July was, um, what you did, how much food you ate, the amazing fireworks you saw, and anything else that you did. Uh, it's fantastic to hear. And I'm already excited for everybody. So this has been another awesome episode of Great News Weekly with me, Jenny Craig Brown and Great News Life. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys a ton. Have a wonderful week, an amazing weekend. Catch us here every week, Wednesdays at noon or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great week.